thank you, Nancy, and uh, thanks for everybody having me here. Uh, when Nancy first reached out to me uh, to invite me to come and speak here, I was, I was really excited to be able to participate. And when she told me that it was down in southern Florida, I got a lot more excited. I'm, uh, I'm living in New York, grew up in Chicago, and one thing you learn in the wintertime is if anyone invites you down south during those months, it doesn't matter what it is, just get down there. So I was really excited to be able to get down there. However, she didn't tell me this was over uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, nor did she tell me that the New York, New York Giants would be playing in the Super Bowl. And she definitely didn't tell me that the New York Giants would be playing uh, and uh, kind of toying with these New England Patriots, literally running down the field and trying to stop from scoring touchdowns, kind of falling into the end zone. Uh, so uh, I'm glad she didn't tell me that because I'm not sure if I would have had the confidence to, to come down here. I may have wanted to stay in New York to watch this, but I'm glad I did because I had a lot of fun last night and I'm really excited to be here. Uh, as Nancy said, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about American Express and the small business group that I work within and uh, actually do a bit of a, a case study so that you can understand not just what we're doing uh, with this particular initiative, actually I'm going to talk about Small Business Saturday, but some of the thinking that went into it. Uh, and hopefully this is helpful, and then we'll just open it up for Q&A if you have any questions. So I'm just going to jump into the presentation. So just to put a, a little context around what I'm going to talk about first is the group that I work within, OPEN, uh, is the business unit dedicated to helping small business owners. We have about 1,100 people uh, out there every day focused on helping entrepreneurs and small business owners in America. We've been around for about 25 years, uh, specifically this business unit. We've got a couple dozen uh, products and services, and um, we've done pretty well. We're, we're about four times the size of our nearest competitor. So that's the context around American Express Open. But before I get into Small Business Saturday and, and uh, get into how we've been thinking about it from a digital standpoint, I thought it would be worthwhile to talk about the, the context of where this idea came from. And it's actually not the, the most exciting uh, thing to be looking at, especially at this point in time. But the truth is, uh, small business owners were going through some pretty tough times over the last few years. None of this is probably news to you, but for small business owners, when you saw the housing prices plummet, we all felt it, or if you're a homeowner, I know I did, um, but for a small business owner, this meant revenues stopped or slowed down dramatically. People stopped spending, and when they did spend, they went to uh, major discounters or went online. So this hurt their revenues in a big way. At the same time, uh, oil prices were skyrocketing. A lot of the co costs of doing business were going up. So if you're a small business owner, your revenues are falling, your costs are going up, and the worst part was the banking industry was in pretty tough shape, and they stopped lending. So business owners were in really, really dire, state, dire straits when it comes to uh, their cash flow. So I think this is really important context to understand um, uh, where American Express at and where business owners were when this concept of Small Business Saturday emerged. So rather than talking through uh, what this is, I thought I would just show a quick clip, 60 second clip, um, that describes Small Business Saturday, what we recently run. So if we can run that. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our communities. Absolutely crucial, vital. They make it unique and they make you happy to live where you live. It brings a little flair to, to the towns that we have. On November 26th, you can make a huge impact by shopping small on Small Business Saturday. One purchase. One purchase is all it takes. Pledge to shop small on Small Business Saturday. It will help support your community. And that is a big deal. It's pretty big. So pick your favorite local business and join the movement. I pledge to shop small at Big Top Candy Shop. At Juno Baby Store. Allen's Boots. Sammy's Camera. Tags Hardware. You don't have to buy the whole store. Make the pledge to shop small. Please! On Small Business Saturday. So we're trying to inspire consumers to get out there and uh, support their local businesses during this tough time. And so how did this play out? Well, as you can see here, uh, in our second year, we launched in 2010. So in 2011, we had over 100 million people go out and support their local businesses. Pretty, pretty incredible. I mean, just talking about the Super Bowl. Basically, everyone that watched the Super Bowl last night went out in America and actually shopped at a local business to support them. 
and for all of us marketers in the room to see 65% public awareness. I mean, this idea of shopping small, Small Business Saturday, didn't even exist a year and a half ago. So pretty incredible result. And when you see the video uh, of this commercial, you might think, oh, well, helping a small business owner, that seems like a logical thing to do. It's not that big of a deal. We'll just go out there and do it. But you have to understand, we were changing consumer behavior. These were extremely tough times. People were not going out and shopping in local businesses. They went to the cheapest alternative. So this was, this was a pretty big deal in, as far as changing consumer behavior. But it wasn't just consumers. We got some pretty important people to get behind this movement. President Obama was out there shopping small on Small Business Saturday. We actually had public officials in every single one of the 50 states get out there and talk about Small Business Saturday and go and show their support. We had um, the US Senate pass a resolution to make this an official day. Um, let me just repeat that. They passed something at the US Senate. <laughs> Um, so this is a big deal, and again, it, when you look at something like this, you think, oh, well, you know, politicians supporting local businesses, that seems pretty natural, that shouldn't be such a hard thing to accomplish. But remember, this is coming from a, from a financial services in industry, and my, my PR team, my uh, public relations team is in here, so I could probably say this, but the financial services industry hasn't been the most favored industry over the last few years. And uh, as, as much as we at American Express don't associate ourselves, with some of the uh, other financial services companies out there, uh, we can't kid ourselves to think, uh, as we were developing this concept, that politicians weren't quick to stand next to a financial services company. Uh, as different as we might be, Goldman Sachs headquarters is across the street. The Occupy Wall Street movement basically happened in our front lawn. So this was actually a really big leap of faith for us to figure out if this was gonna work and we we're gonna get this kind of support. And the next area that was really important for us to make this a success is it wasn't just about American Express. We had support of over 75 different corporations around the country helping make this a movement. And so, so there's actually quite a few players that are here today um, that helped us make this a big deal. Again, you look at this and you say, oh, well, of course, helping small businesses, this shouldn't be such a hard thing to do. But when you look at some of the most important merchants and partners for American Express, companies like Costco, um, these are big companies, and we were encouraging them on the most important weekend of the year. I mean, they call it Black Friday for a reason. This is when merchants make or break their year. And we were encouraging consumers, 100 million consumers, to go out and basically go to an alternative. Costco is such an important partner of ours. We have co-brand partners. If you go into a Costco and you have a Citibank or Chase, Visa, MasterCard, you can't even use that credit card within that establishment. So this was a really big deal. It was a pretty big leap of faith again, but we got that support. So that gives you a little bit of background of Small Business Saturday. The, the more interesting part is how did we get there? I talked to, you heard Nancy talk a little bit about the, the big ideas. And if you ask people at American Express how this came to be, you probably hear the story that about six weeks pri prior to the first Small Business Saturday in 20, 2010, we were sitting around the room and this idea came up and literally people were like, oh, that's great, let's run with it. And six weeks later we had this movement now we've got over 100 million people going out there. And, and you love those ideas, so you love hearing those stories. But the truth is, uh, there, there needed to be an environment. There needed to be fertile soil for this to actually happen. And that's the part that I think is uh, really important to dig into. So I just wanted to spend a couple minutes talking through that. So first, all of us know this. For, you know, the most important thing in any of these ideas is understanding your customer. But the reason why I call this out is because right now there's so much going on within digital. There's so many new companies, new capabilities, and it's quick to want to jump into them and take advantage. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but uh, you, it's, you gotta be careful not to, to jump on something without understanding the customer insight. So for what you're seeing here are the six core needs that we have uncovered over many, many years in, in research studies of what's on a small business owner's mind. And the first one here, the most important one, is getting and retaining new customers. So for Small Business Saturday, if you think about it, that's what this was all about. How are we going to get consumers to shop in a, a small business, get them into that restaurant, get them into that real, uh, retail establishment? So everything else didn't really matter as long as we were serving this number one customer need. The second thing that I wanted to highlight, uh, any, anyone actually know who Carl is? All right, uh, quite a few people actually. So uh, I, there's so many young faces in here, I wasn't really sure if uh, people were gonna recognize this guy. But for, the, for those that don't, this is, uh, he's an Academy Award winning actor and he was Amex's pitch man. He was the one that you may have heard say, don't leave home without them. So in the 1970s and 1980s, he was in all of our commercials and he was talking about traveler's checks. 
And you, you may recall some of these commercials where uh, you know, someone, some uh, guy's in Europe and he gets his wallet stolen or a woman in Asia and her bag gets taken. And basically, whatever the scenario, the end is they're in a traveler's, uh, traveler's office for American Express in some foreign location and we're taking care of them. And that's really the point is that uh, over time, that's what our brand has stood for. I know personally, when I, when I was about to go off to Europe to study abroad when I was in college, my parents sat me down, gave me my first, uh, my first charge card, and they gave me a map. And the map was a map of Europe, and there was an American Express icon or logo in all of the places where the traveler offices uh, were located. And it's funny looking back on it, because they were saying, you know, if you get into any problems, anything, they must have known me a little too well, um, but if you get into any problems, just find the American Express office. They'll take care of you, no matter what it is. And looking back on it, I think it's pretty funny now that I work there, because it wasn't find the embassy or find the consulate or whatever, it was find an American Express office. And I think that speaks volumes of our heritage. And the reason why I bring this up, again, there's so much going on with, within digital that you want to leap and, t and jump and move. Um, but the truth is, if you can't figure out what your heritage is and identify that bridge, you're, pro you're gonna have a hard time connecting. What we've found is that there's a natural skepticism of anything innovative if there isn't that bridge. Skepticism of why you're doing it and skepticism if you're gonna be successful at it. So for us, every idea and concept that we come up with, we're one, trying to make sure it co connects back to that core customer need and then trying to figure out what that bridge is for where we are today to where we're trying to go and trying to innovate. And the last part that I would highlight um, in, in a lot of the filtering mechanisms to this new innovation is making sure the things that we're doing today, I mean, understanding our customers, understanding that bridge is important, but we gotta, we gotta use what's working today. And so open form is one of those assets that um, we, we, we've been having some success with. We launched back in 2007. As Nancy said, this is our small business community. And uh, it's grown to, last year we had about 8 million uniques, small business owners, which is about a third of the entire small business community in the United States. And we've learned a lot of things through building this up. And so we wanna make sure that we're taking these learnings. In the case of Small Business Saturday, uh, where it was very much consumer, or sorry, small business oriented as far as our needs, making sure that we understand how this idea of servicing and helping business owners was connected to our heritage. And if you think about that for a moment, you know, I mentioned being stuck in Europe or running into a problem in Asia. There wasn't a worse situation. That pales in comparison to what business owners were going through. So us coming through and helping them in that time of challenge made a lot of sense. It was that bridge. But we had to make it current. And so we took us some of these learnings that we're getting on open forum, and I'll just highlight a, a few key ones here. The first is that brands are welcome as facilitators. And this was important because when we were building out Small Business Saturday, we were trying to facilitate this movement of consumers to business owners. And we weren't trying to do something ourselves, but we were trying to inspire people to take action. And we found this on Open Forum as uh, our success has grown. We weren't actually doing a lot. We were bringing business owners together and offering them insights and information and connections. And that was what was working. We were succeeding as a facilitator. And it gave us the confidence to go forward with Small Business Saturday. Secondly. Uh, and this is pretty obvious, but we had to build for social scale right out of the, uh, uh, out of the gate. We had built Open Forum ourselves, and um, maybe because we were a little bit ahead of, the, ahead of the times back in 2006, 2007 when we were building this, but we realized if we were gonna have true success with Small Business Saturday, we'd, we had to build it off of Facebook from, from the beginning uh, and leverage a lot of the social tools to make it as large as it was. And this third point is actually a really interesting one uh, called reciprocal altruism. And this is something that we had been uh, focused on for quite a while, but didn't actually even know there was a name for it. Uh, Procter & Gamble, I believe, uh, coined this phrase. And the idea behind it is, if you give something away, and you authentically are, are not expecting anything in return, truly altruistic, you get so much more back in return. And so if you think about the idea with uh, Open Forum, we were giving away these great insights, this great information, we were giving them access to experts, we were connecting people, and it wasn't for American Express card members, it wasn't for our merchants, this was for anyone. We weren't asking anything in return. And what we found is when we actually looked at how this was performing, and we looked at countless metrics, but when you looked at our brand metrics, whether it was Net Promoter Score or any of the other brand metrics, we were seeing double and triple digit increases in people that were participating on Open Forum versus those that weren't. Probably even more importantly for American Express, 
is that we could track how their behaviors on our cards uh, were performing for those that were using open form versus those that weren't. And we saw significant increases in loyalty. People were actually using our card products more once they started using open form. And there was no direct connection. And I think this is really important for a lot of people in the digital space right now because you know, internally you have a lot of pressure, or at least we do, uh, with finance and our risk organization, all these organizations of what are we doing here, why are we spending this kind of money? And the key finding here is that this was having a major bottom line impact to our business. It was just not direct. It wasn't a direct come here, take action, sign up for a card, spend more, whatever. It was indirect, but it was significant. Um, so that, that's been really important for us because when you look back at Small Business Saturday in that commercial, that 60 second spot, you didn't actually hear us say, hey, American Express card members, go spend at an American Express accepting merchant. It was just go out there and shop small. And that seems obvious, but there were a lot of internal discussions around how do we do this, how do we make sure we're getting value, we spent a lot of money on that whole program. But we knew through our experience with Open Forum that if we just said go shop small, we don't care if you have an American Express card, we don't care if that merchant accepts American Express, just go support your local business. That the impact that would have, again, being truly altruistic, the impact that we would get back was pretty significant. And I think that's really important for a lot of things that we do within the digital space. So where do we go from here? Again, we're gonna stay true to what I just talked through. Understanding uh, exactly what the customer needs are, making sure that we continually look at how we find that bridge, but just continue to test and learn. I mean, I think that you know, a lot of people are um, imagining what's coming next, but I think that anyone that tells you what's coming next is either lying to you or delusional, because things are just happening so quickly and there's so much uh, new activity in the market that it's very difficult to predict what's next. And so you really have to focus on what's core to, uh, and important to your customers and where your heritage is. So the next stage that I just wanted to talk through is a little bit of how we're experimenting and learning um, on this, uh, uh, the road ahead. And I just wanted to highlight uh, a new partnership that we had, so you can get a, a flavor for what we're doing at American Express. It's this new partnership we uh, launched uh, with a company called General Assembly. And uh, they're a small startup in New York City. Um, they have co -working, a co-working location, which essentially means they bring other entrepreneurs together in a space and um, uh, take advantage of uh, some shared uh, utilities. But really what, it, what it's about, it's about collaboration. You have all these startups sitting in the same room and when they have a design question, they can reach out to uh, someone that's uh, an expert in design at another company, another startup. Um, but more than just the shared space, they teach classes in the evenings and the weekends. Uh, classes around helping business owners be successful. And um, their whole point is they wanna disrupt the MBA. They wanna help these business owners learn the skills they need at night and over the weekends for that following day. And so they were taking a bit of a different approach than American Express had, but the overall objectives were very much the same. How do we help business owners be successful? They were just doing it in a very modern uh, and uh, interesting way. So we formed this, uh, this partnership and we kicked it off with American Express's first ever hackathon, which um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with hackathons, but it was just, it's a way, and it's very common within the software and, and technology industries, but it's a way to bring together a group of people, entrepreneurs, uh, designers, engineers, to create something, but in a combined uh, space and time. And so you put a loose, uh, a loose challenge out there for them and you let them go. And people come and they basically do this because they want to. <laughs> they, they, they get excited about doing this stuff. So we did this over a weekend uh, in New York where we brought these people in. We had about, I think it was around two to 300 engineers, uh, designers, entrepreneurs come in and spend 24 hours trying to build uh, products and services uh, with the loose confines of trying to reinvent local to help small business owners in new and interesting ways. And at the end of the 24 hours, we actually had 27 working uh, products, companies. And uh, I, think, I think it goes to show you if you bring people together and give them a, a challenge, they'll pull this together and do something pretty interesting. So without talking a little bit more about that, I'll just show this video and you can get a sense of how we're trying to rethink and remake American Express. <laughs>
American Express is committed to helping small business owners, but I think today is very symbolic that we're going outside our comfort zone, outside to the developer community to bring in really good ideas from different people to come up with something new and better for small businesses. We've asked the small business owners what are the big challenges that they're facing, and we're trying to inspire the developers to really tap into their ingenuity to try to solve some of those problems. We're so excited to have found General Assembly because they are so much in the same space that we are in terms of their interest in really helping spur entrepreneurship. I think Open is a, is a fantastic partner for General Assembly uh, because our missions are very, very much aligned. The Reinventing Local Hackathon also gave us a wonderful opportunity to launch our Open Forum API. I definitely did not uh, know that American Express dabbled in a space like this. Welcome to Reinvent Local. Um, you're a General Assembly. Uh, thanks for coming by. Everyone here is, is at a hackathon, so presumably you know what a hackathon is. A hackathon is you get a bunch of nerds in the room, people who make stuff, and you show something really cool that you made in 24 hours. Hackathons are very challenging. It's an outlet for you to try something new, to learn from other people. I'd never done a hackathon before, so I didn't know what to expect. And then I saw a few people get up and pitch ideas, and and then we all started brainstorming and gathered more people. The app that we're working on is a tool for small business owners to display social data. Our app aggregates re different restaurant reviews. This thing with, it just shows you the best deals. You're uptown, I'm downtown. The app will suggest places in the middle and will give us a deal on our lunch when we go there. The energy here is just something you can feel and touch. It's something that uh, you know I want to make sure that we build upon in the, the months and years ahead. And we said, all right, let's do this. And that was about midday, probably noon or so. And now, I guess, is it 10 o'clock? It's 11.45, and we have a lot of work ahead of us. I feel a little tired, but, uh, you know, we're packing through. I probably will stay here until 2. I wish that there was more time, but I know that eventually my body's going to say, hey, take a nap, so that's when uh, we'll probably go home. In addition to actually helping build these solutions, we're bringing in small business owners so that they can take classes right alongside the developers. They're going to learn about how they can use some of this new technology to help their business grow. I went to sleep around 4.30 or 5 a.m. Um, I don't even know if that was including daylight savings or not, I don't really remember. I've had zero sleep uh, since the beginning of the event. Uh, it just takes a little bit of effort and you know, pushing hard for the last couple hours. You can accomplish a lot if you put four people in a room for 30 hours and give them a project to complete. Today's event, um, when I first walked in, I thought, oh, what? this is a different planet I've walked into. It was a bit overwhelming, but very inspiring. This is the menu spot. It's called a blocker mapper. Fresh tomatoes here. Building Lee, it's custom pages for every building and we make it easy for local businesses to use Buildingly to, to create tailored offers. It's foursquare.us. Um, thank you very much. The judges have made their decision. The Buildingly team. Buildingly. Building three prizes. Three prizes. We should have won four. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think Foursquare won the Small Business uh, Owners Award because it, it, it draws people into venues. We didn't take any prizes home. I feel that we um, were able to produce an amazing product that uh, the community can use um, as of today. What really comes out of here are friendships and partnerships that will define the future of business and technology. Today, having a hackathon and opening up ourselves to new ideas from, uh, from all the hackers outside, I think is very symbolic of the change within American Express. So can, I, can I just see a show of hands of how many people here have participated in a hackathon? All right, so a few. Uh, if I had asked that question at American Express uh, a couple months ago, I don't think I would have even had that many. Uh, and I can tell you, hopefully uh, that was interesting, maybe even inspiring to see um, how you can pull together a group of people and actually do something really quickly. I mean, 27 different 
products, working products within a 24 hour pe uh, period of time. I, I don't know about your own organizations, but we don't typically work at that speed at American Express. Um, so uh, that was inspiring. Uh, maybe some of you will want to go and uh, try, try uh, kicking off a hackathon yourselves in your organization. Uh, I will give you one uh, warning, uh, and maybe you're in a different industry, but being in the financial services industry, uh, when you do propose this idea of hosting a hackathon, um, be careful because uh, this idea of American Express and hacking at least didn't gel real well. Uh, I had pretty much every governing body, I, I didn't even know some of these governing bodies existed, uh, come knocking on my door in my office, uh, uh, government affairs to privacy and security and technology and compliance and, and the list goes on, um, wondering why the hell I was asking people to come together and hack us. Um, but of course, that's, that wasn't the, uh, the goal. Um, but all kidding aside, um, I, I think you, know, you saw the president of our organization there, you saw the vice chairman of our company there. This is important to us. And the, the point of this hackathon, which was you know, one weekend, uh, a relatively small event, was not to launch something new. It was to really try to transform our company. And it was one way of us saying, listen, we don't necessarily know what's coming, but we know who our customers are, we know who we are, and we know we gotta keep learning and moving with them. And so that was one example of how we're trying to uh, transform our brand digitally and try to get some ideas from, from this group in a very natural and authentic way. So hopefully that um, gives you a sense of how we've been evolving American Express and, and our brand. And uh, I thought I would just open it up and see if there are any questions that I could answer now or I'll be around over the next couple of days and happy to, to talk to you offline as well. Got a question over here. Hi, thank you. It's Paul Santello with Evolve Media. Um, when you were showing, uh, you showed a lot of digital folks supported this effort. What exactly did they do? What was the sort of digital support plan for um, Shop Local? Oh, sure. So uh, of the, the 75 companies that you saw up there um, that were working on with us on this, so it ranged. So it ranged from uh, very large uh, support so FedEx actually gave a million dollars in uh, $25 increments. They, they shipped uh, $25 gift cards to consumers across the company that were good uh, at small businesses. And so they kind of primed the comp, 40,000 consumers received this. So that was at one end of the spectrum. The other uh, were just local businesses using their own marketing, or sorry, businesses using their own marketing channels to get the word out, whether it's through email marketing, through putting up uh, signage within their own uh, establishments or on their websites. Uh, so it really r ran the gamut. Hi, Jenna Naughton from eBay. Thank you, so that was very inspiring. Thank you so much. Um, I think the question before was about how you use your, your co-op partners. How did Amex activate and engage your base around this idea? Yeah, so, um, so this was our second year. And uh, you know, in all honesty, the first year was it was a bit harder. Uh, we d we had a few actually reach out to us directly as the movement started. We didn't even know internally the first year how big this would become. Um, and so as, start as it started getting traction, more from a viral standpoint, we had a number of uh, our larger partners and merchants say, "Hey, listen, we're we're aligned with you on trying to help business owners. So uh, how can we participate?" So in the second year, because we knew that there was this natural interest in trying to, uh, to support the movement, we put together a, uh, a, a large team out there dedicated to do outreach with our key partners. And so it was, a, it was a little bit of us proactively reaching out, and in some cases they were reaching out to us. One of the benefits of American Express, because we go out and acquire merchants to accept the card, we have a large merchant, merchant services organization with client managers that manage those relationships on an ongoing basis. So we brought these people together and really put together um, multiple different options and how they could support us. Yes, oh, <clears throat> Ravi Bhaskaran. Just a quick question. I know a lot of companies have communities of some sort or the other. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about ROI, how you had to justify things within the company, what challenges you had, how you yeah. measured it. Um, so this is, this is definitely uh, one of the most common questions I get both internally and externally. Um, because running a community, I mean, you, could, you can run a community relatively inexpensively, especially now on Facebook, um, but to build something as large as we did on open forum and to um, maintain that um, has been quite expensive, to be honest. 
and uh, so we've got uh, a lot of internal uh, justifications that go on to, to try to support that. Um, as I mentioned, I think um, the way that we've been trying to manage this is there's a spectrum of value. There is very hard direct value we see from Open Forum. It's not the purpose, again, of what Open Forum stands for, but we do get people that come to Open Forum and, and acquire a card, and that's very easy for us to track, and there's value to that. We also have sponsors on Open Forum. We're not in a traditional advertising model because we want to manage uh, the experience, but we have sponsors like AT&T and FedEx that are paying us to participate on Open Forum. So those are very direct dollars that we can tie back to finance and, and justify some of our existence. Then when you start moving along that spectrum, gets into that loyalty piece. So we have um, the ability to track how people are performing when they're on open form and when they're not. We're actually able to show the lift. Um, so that's probably a little bit unique to American Express, but um, you know, trying to attribute all of that value back is a little more challenging, and we've used um, external partners to, to help us do that. I know uh, the Visual IQ team is here, and, and we did use the Visual IQ team to help us um, determine the actual value and attribution of open form. And then as you move down that spectrum, you start to get into your brand metrics. And, and we, everyone here understands there's ways to value these brand metrics and the net promoter score and others, but they become um, uh, a little softer. And so we have the spectrum, and for us, depending on who we're talking to, and uh, the, that believability index can shift back and forth, but we've been lucky that we've scaled it to such a size that, um, that the part on the far left, those hard dollars, are are able to um, be large enough where it's, it's worth continuing just on that alone. Okay, we have time for one last question so over here to your right. Oh. Hi, Dave Voparlon from Microsoft. Uh, what were some of your metrics going in? I noticed the results you had with uh, you know, 100 million people participated in uh, Small Business Saturday and also the awareness you drove. Was it kind of going out there to kind of align your brand with this effort and was there some type of net effect or halo effect that American Express, you talked a little bit about net promoter, but do you see you know, your, your corporate brand benefiting from these things or, and, and what was kind of the time scale that you looked at those? Yeah, so uh, absolutely uh, this has been beneficial for our brand overall. Uh, I think very strong halo in, uh, effect. However, getting back to our core purpose, um, as I said, we, our, our number one metric was, are we driving people into small businesses? Uh, we, because we're the market leader, as I mentioned before, we're about four times the size of our nearest competitor. We, we do have the luxury of just uh, truly trying to help business owners because um, we know that if they're successful and they stay in business and they keep growing, uh, we in turn will be successful. So the most important metric to us is, are we driving lift? Are we encouraging people to go and shop small? And so when you see the, the 100 million, that, that's, that's pretty impressive, but probably more importantly is the year-over-year -year lifts that we're seeing in spend within small businesses. And so the last two years that we've been running, we've seen uh, high double-digit growth year-over-year -year as far as the impact to small business owners. Um, so for us, that was the most important metric. Some of these other um, aspects that we're now seeing, that gets back to this whole reciprocal altruism, we're getting value back from it, but um, we try to be really disciplined about not um, allowing that to be our core metric, because once that starts to eke its way in, you start to make different types of decisions. And uh, for something like this to really be as big as it is, you, you really have to stay true to that. Terrific. Right. Thank you, Scott. That was a Thank great you. open.